Bonaire is the hidden jewel of the Caribbean. This Dutch island is truly one of a kind. My name is Eric Conover and this is a video journal of my travels around the world and bits of my daily life here in New York City. I'm currently here in beautiful sunny Marbella, Spain, and this week's episode is one from the archives back in 2018. In this video, I made a list of the most incredible places I saw while exploring Bonaire. Before we jump into it, I'd like to thank Villa One Tequila for sponsoring this video. Villa One is an ultra premium handcrafted tequila founded by Nick Jonas and John Barbados. And the ethos behind this brand is to experience life as it should be, with friends old and new, one glass at a time. Make sure to check out the link down below in the description to learn more and to place your order. And with that, these are the top most incredible places in Bonaire you have to see to believe. Located at the southern tip of Bonaire, through the clouds lies the setting out of a Hollywood blockbuster film, The Solar Salt Pans of Bonaire. The solar salt pans have been pumping out salt for over 400 years. The salt pans cover 13% of the island, and to put that in perspective, Bonaire is very, very tiny. It's maybe 100 square miles. If you look off to the side, there are these massive, enormous piles of dried sea salt. It takes 10 to 12 months for the water to evaporate and the salt to be fully formed. The salt is then carried out through this salt pier, and it is put on big transport ships and shipped out to the rest of the world. The million dollar question, why are the salt pans so pink? As the salinity increases in the water, there's only one type of algae that can grow in such a high salinity content. And there's only one type of shrimp that can then eat this algae. And there's only one bird that can eat this specific type of shrimp, and that is the flamingo. And that right there is the reason why flamingos are pink. If you look, baby flamingos aren't pink, they're white. I just find that fascinating, maybe you do too. The best thing to do at the salt pans is to rent a moped, grab a friend, and just go for a nice long cruise. We were riding along and we came across these salt bubbles. The wind was blowing across the one salt lake and on the leeward side there was just this massive pile of white salt bubbles. Also the salt pans are a prime spot to pop off fire grams. Wear all white, go down to the pink, you will get the most cinematic pictures. Your friends will be on your Instagram scrolling through. This is one of those places where you truly have to be here to see it just because it is something so unique that you can't find anywhere else in the world. We're gonna say goodbye to the solar salt pans, head inland and north on the island to our number two. The Caves of Bonaire. Bonaire is a big coral reef that popped out of the ocean and there's a network of over 400 caves on the island. You can see this is all forest. People cannot build houses here because under us is cave. It's all caves. This is the kind of stuff that I dreamed about when I was a kid going exploring in caves. We're in a residential neighborhood. We get out of the car and we just walk through this brush, I'd say about 500 meters. Smack dab in the middle of this neighborhood, there was just a hole in the ground, an entrance to some dark cave portal under the island. I'm having doubts. I don't know if don't I Go in. You can do it though. Tell my grandkids that I love them. I'm gonna need a new pair of underwear after this. Mike, come show how deep this is. Eric says it's as big as a cathedral. I thought it was gonna be as like big as a car. Going down into the cave. I want to mention before I get into this, if you are in Bonaire and you're going into the cave system, do not go alone. There's tours all over the island that can take you down into the caves. They know exactly where to go, exactly where not to go, and will keep you safe. To see the rock formations and really see the history of the island, if you look closely, you can actually see imprints of fossilized fish and coral in the limestone rock. Just to show you how dark it can get in here, we're going to turn off all the lights and turn them back on. Uh, so it's like 110. Matt and Mike didn't want to come down just because it's so hot and Mike's afraid of tiny spaces. So we're going to go back up now to another cave and go underwater. To get to the underwater cave entrance, we had to trek through the raw cactus forest of Bonaire to an opening in the side of the hill. To the water caves. Are you scared? Am I scared? Yeah. No, I'm not scared. Look Mike. behind you. You're going into... Oh, Mike! I'll see you in like an hour. From there, you have to rappel down into the cave. There is a narrow opening, maybe two foot by, I'd say, four foot. It's a portal. It is the entrance to another world. The thing about the underwater cave network and underwater cave diving is that the caves are so narrow, you cannot go down there with a scuba tank. It's all free diving, meaning you have to hold your breath. You go under with your flashlight. Again, it's completely pitch dark, and you swim.
The first swim is about 30 seconds underwater with no air. Then you pop up into a cavern under the island. So there's basically all these little air pockets. And I have to say that I think that everyone can do it. The key to cave diving is staying completely calm. That's easier said than done watching this footage, but if you can remain calm, it's actually pretty therapeutic. Number three on our list is day diving. This island was made for diving. There are 87 dive sites on the island itself. I don't own any dive gear, so I have to rent everything. My fins, my snorkel, my mask, my regulator, weights, and my booties. So you rent all your gear, you load up the truck, and you go. First dive of the trip in Bonaire. Let's go do this, see some sea creatures, see some coral. To get to this dive site, we have to walk through all the brush with all of our gear down to the coral. I highly recommend you wear your booties down to the water or your feet are just gonna get torn up and you don't wanna have bloody feet in the water because that's gonna attract sharks. There's no shark. I mean, there's sharks there, but once you enter the waters of Bonaire, it's like you're going into another world because the island itself is very dry and desert. When you get underwater, that's where the life is. All the coral and the fish. If you are a photographer, especially underwater, you have to dive at Salt Pier. It is the most photogenic dive spot. Huge schools of fish like to just chill out in the shade under the pier and they don't move. Like you can swim right up to these fish and they're just chilling. The thing that I love about diving is that humans have no business being underwater. We need so much gear to go down there and there's a lot of respect that comes with that. Bonaire was actually the first island in all the Caribbean that protected the entire island. From the high water mark all the way down to 200 feet, the island is completely protected, meaning you can't spearfish there, you can't take anything from the coral. Before you go on your dive, you pay a $25 nature fee, which goes to funding the national park, something that is actually very important in the world today to preserve what is naturally there. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this massive green shadow slither its way through the bottom. And I'm talking fast. This was a green Murray eel. This fish is the incarnation of what would be the devil in fish form. This is such a menacing looking animal. And just the way he moved through the water, going through the coral, hiding, poking his little head out. Then he would open his mouth and show his teeth, his snaggle tooth. When you are down there diving, you are in their element. You're on their home turf. You need to respect everything down there. Just an observer and really just enjoy all the beauty down there. After seeing that Green Murray Guzzler on my dive, I wanted to get out of the water, hit the beaches, which brings us to our number four. No Name Beach. Not far off the coast of Bonaire is one of, if not the only island left in all the Caribbean that has not and cannot be developed on. The island is called Klein Bonaire, which translates to Little Bonaire. Getting to the island is very, very easy. There's a water taxi that runs a few times per day, but the best way to go and to beat the crowds is to just make friends on the island. place that you actually have to see it to believe it to experience it you're more or less stranded on your own private island for the day when you visit Klein Bonaire if you've ever wondered what happens underwater when the Sun goes down number five is night diving when you're night diving the feeling of isolation is so overwhelming that you are this tiny little human and you are in such a big unknown body of water. I'd say it's the closest thing to going into outer space. I've never been to outer space. I'm sure neither have you, but the one thing, I mean, maybe if you're Chris Hadfield, you're watching this, what's up? This is a bucket list thing right here. I've been wanting You've to do this. You've never been night diving before? Never ever. We're actually joined by a lot of people. This place is super popular just because by the pillars, that's where the fish hang out. Uh, so wish me luck. What do you got on a wetsuit? What else? Show me your gear. Before the night dive, it is critical that you have your buddy and you gear up and do a gear check before you go in the water. You have to check everything. Check your air, your regulator, your beat. ECD. Eric and I are swimming underwater, we're going about, and it was just after the full moon, and there is this phenomenon called the ocercod. The ocercod is a fish that glows in the dark, it is a bioluminescent fish. We turn off our lights, and I look up, 
in my whole life I've never experienced something so cosmic truly out of this world everywhere you look there was these ostracod fish glowing. The things that come out underwater at night are out of this world. These little bug-like creatures were surrounding my flashlight, almost like fireflies. Then out of nowhere, Eric points his light into the shadows and there is a lobster, probably a good five foot lobster, blue and pink and purple with these two beady eyes just going. Enough with the sea creatures for now. The thing that really makes Bonaire stick out in my mind are the people. Number six on our list is the culture of Bonaire. Rincon in the north is the cultural epicenter of Bonaire. We stayed in the southern part of the island and the best way to get to the north is to rent a motorbike. My number one travel tip is to make friends wherever you go and with that said, I rented a bike and headed north. Rincon is a city set back in time. Indigenous people have lived on the island of Bonaire for 2,900 years, but the Spanish added Bonaire to the modern map 500 years ago and eventually became a Dutch island. The official language is Dutch, but recognized regionally is Papiamento, a Spanish Creole language. This is very important to note that most bars only accept cash and US dollars is the currency used on the island. When you visit Rincon, you have to try the cactus liquor. It is so sweet. Bottoms up, bottoms up. Bon air, bon air. Bon air. I actually have a bottle that I took back to New York. It's that good. Spend a day in Rincon, make some friends, and learn how to sing and dance like the locals. <laughs> Leaving the city of Rincon just to the north is the National Park. Number seven on the list of the most incredible places in Bonaire you have to see is National Park Cliff Jumping. The National Park takes up 60% of the island and is totally protected from any development. There's tons of wildlife in the National Park, iguanas, wild donkey roaming by the sea, and flamingos searching for those shrimp we talked about. It is a vast network of connecting dirt roads. We didn't have a pickup truck, but luckily we made friends with some local Dutch girls. Through the raw terrain of the National Park emerges Schlagby Beach. It's the best spot on the whole island for cliff jumping. You walk up through the cactus forest overlooking the bright yellow huts. Up a 25 foot high ancient coral and limestone rock formation. The jump is pretty high and it's actually not too deep so you have to make sure that you go with someone who knows where the right place to jump is. And then you take the plunge. My number one thing to do on the island is to make a day of it, pack a bunch of food, some drinks, grab friends, and just have a beach day. This beach, it's, it's truly magical. It's something else. And I want to thank you for taking the time and watching this video. I can't say it enough. I highly recommend you go to Bonaire. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Press that subscribe button. Turn on post notifications so you're notified when I do post new travel content. And I will see you in the next travel series, which will be from Hawaii.